Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to have a quick lesson on hydration shells. So let's go ahead and get started. With hydration shells, I want you to understand that we're talking about a solution. And remember that a solution is where you have a solute that is dissolved in a solvent. So the solute is dissolved in the solvent and that makes a solution. When we're talking about cases where the solvent is water, then we call this an aqueous solution. So I'll write that right here. If it's water, it's an aqueous solution. So that brings us to hydration shells. When an ionic compound, remember, ionic is talking about when you have a positively charged atom and a negatively charged atom and they, uh, those positive and negative charges are attracted to each other and that forms a, an ionic bond. Uh, and so the, an electron is transferred there. You have an electron that is lost from one atom and gained by another atom and that creates the positive and the negative, and then they have that ionic bond. When you have an, a, a, some kind of ionic compound, something like sodium chloride or potassium fluoride or magnesium chloride or magnesium bromide or calcium chloride, there's a whole bunch of different ones. When they are dissolved in water, each of those ions is surrounded by a sphere of water molecules, and this is called a hydration shell. And so what does this look like? I'm going to draw an example for ionic compounds. With this one, I'm going to use just the basic example of sodium chloride. So you put sodium chloride into water and it dissolves. How does it do that? Well, it's because of these hydration shells. So first you have the sodium chloride dissociate or ionize. That means that it forms its ions. So a positively charged sodium ion and a negatively charged chloride ion. Now, what happens with the water? I'm actually gonna grab another marker real quick. I think it'll be easier to see. Okay, so with the water, remember that water itself has a separation of charges. It's made up of two polar covalent bonds and the electrons in those covalent bonds are shared unequally. And this means that the oxygen of water has a partial negative charge and the hydrogens of water have a partial positive charge. So I'm going to draw that here. I'm going to draw a water molecule with its partially negative charged oxygen forming an interaction with this positively charged sodium. And now I'm just going to draw a few more of these. Here we go. So here we have all of these water molecules that have their partially negatively charged oxygens oriented toward or facing the sodium ion so that you get all of these regions of partial negative charge on those oxygens interacting with the positive charge on the sodium ion. With the chloride ion, it's very similar except remember that the chloride ion is not positively charged, it's negatively charged. And so what part of the water molecule do you think is going to orient towards that negatively charged chloride ion? Well, if you guessed hydrogen, you're correct. Let me draw what one of these looks like. Here's a water molecule. Remember that it is the hydrogens that are partially positive, so they will have an interaction with the negative chloride ion. So I'm going to Draw a few more of these. So in all of these cases, you've got the partially positive hydrogen oriented towards the negative chloride ion. And so these structures right here are the hydration shells. So this right here is a hydration shell. This right here is a hydration shell. And in both cases, you just have water using the partial charges that it has, either the partial negative on the oxygen or the partial positive on the hydrogens, 
to interact with these ions in such a way that allows them to be dissolved in that water solvent. So these are the traditional hydration shells. Now I want to point out how things look with polar molecules. They're not hydration shells in the sense that we see right here, but we still see interactions with water and polar molecules that help them to be soluble, um, help them to dissolve in water. So an example of this would be something like um, an alcohol. So for example, uh, I'm just gonna draw methanol. So methanol looks like this. We've got a CH3 attached to an oxygen, attached to a hydrogen. And it's this right here that makes this an alcohol, that OH group right there. And so right here, we still have polar covalent bonds. We still have a um, partially positive hydrogen and a partially negative oxygen. And so when you drop something like uh, methanol into water, the water can form these same types of interactions. And I should say these are called hydrogen bonds. When you've got bonds between, um, between a hydrogen and either an oxygen, fluorine, or nitrogen. So right here, I'm going to draw some of these hydrogen bonds. Here is um, one water molecule. We've got its partial negative, and it's going to be attracted to the partial positive of this hydrogen. I can draw um, with our. We're gonna we're gonna reverse it again, just like we saw here, where the different side of the water molecule oriented towards either a positive or a negative. We'll see that here. We've got the partial negative on this oxygen oriented towards the hydrogen, and now we'll have kind of the opposite example where we have the partial positive of this hydrogen forming a hydrogen bond right here. So I should say, I wanna make it clear, these right here are not um, hydrogen bonds in like in the proper sense because a hydrogen bond is a bond between a hydrogen and then either a fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen on another uh, compound, which is not what's happening here, but it is what's happening here. So these right here would be hydrogen bonds. You've got the these um, intermolecular forces, meaning they're between two different molecules, so between the alcohol and between the water. Um, and it's all rooted in this partial positive on the hydrogen, partial negative on the oxygen, and how those are attracted to each other. And so this right here is also why polar molecules, um, you might have heard these called hydrophilic molecules. Remember hydrophilic means water loving. Why these things can dissolve in water, it all has to do with these types of interactions that are rooted in water having these partial positives and partial negatives. And so that's it for today. If you're interested in watching another video, I have one that is called um, How Does Water Hydrogen Bond? And it goes into this in a lot more detail, particularly with, with um, oxygen's electronegativity and the unequal sharing of electrons and just exactly how that happens in actuality. So check out that video and thanks for watching today. Bye.